Hello and welcome to Azure Lane Meta. If after this video you want to help support the channel, please check out my affiliate store at kit.co slash Azure Lane Meta. All right, guys, we're back with update time. Of course, we are all excited for PR4, which is coming at the end of this update. In this video, we will go over the stats and skills of these five new ships, as well as my initial thoughts. Before we get into that, though, we have a bunch of new stuff coming with this update, and we'll go over that really quickly before we get into the five ships. First up, all of the current events will come to a close. They will be replaced by the Azure Lane Crosswaves rerun event. This is the one where you fight the world boss Suruga. With this rerun, though, we will get a brand new Suruga skin. Everybody on a single server will work together to defeat Suruga. If you defeat Suruga, everyone will get a Type 93 Oxy Torpedo, which is nice. Grinding the event will give you options to get a Ryusei Plane, which is good for newer players who don't have that yet. And most importantly, for the individual point contributions, you can get a Gold VH Armor. This is an exclusive item to this event. It is a very important item for Azuma in PvE, and it will likely be good for a gear, but we'll find out later in this video. Otherwise, this event is just going to be a good event to grind up some experience for the PR4 ships as well as get a good chunk of materials that you're always seeming to be low on. With PR4, we have a revision to how the PR system as a whole works. PR1, 2, and 3 will all have a little bit of changes after this update. So let's start with PR1. You will now be able to buy PR1 blueprints with coins. It will cost you 1,500 coins per blueprint, so now effectively you can enhance your PR1 ships with coins. The first 15 blueprints will also be discounted heavily, so you'll get them for less than 1,500 coins per blueprint. Moving on to PR2, we have a lot of important things, such as the PR2 catch-up. A total of 600 blueprints will be available for the PR2 ships, 300 combined for the four PR ships, and 150 each for the two DR ships. Additionally, PR2 content will be added to the rookie research missions. Similar to the PR1 version, you'll get tactical data that can be exchanged for experience towards your PR2 ships or prototype cores. For PR3, we are getting Fate Simulated plus 5. Odin, Champagne, Mains, and Cheshire will be getting updated skills. DRs like Drake, Azuma, and FDG are still waiting for their Fate Simulated plus 5. They don't get that yet. In terms of equipment, we also have some noteworthy news. The Bofur Stag will now be available in PR4 research. 50 prints of the prototype 457mm Rainbow Georgia gun will now be available in the prototype shop. These prints will not reset like the other items in that shop. Thus, you have a lifetime limit of 50 prints. This means that every player will have the option to build one 457 per account. This will help newer players who don't want to do PR2 actually get the gun. Also in the prototype shop, the PR1 blueprints will be replaced with universal PR3 blueprints. We also have some optimization in the way that research works. Research that targets a specific ship will now only drop the blueprints of that specific ship. This means that you'll have more blueprints of the targeted ship that you want, but less blueprints overall. Additionally, when you refresh your researches, targeted research of PR ships that you have already maxed out will no longer appear. Honestly, these quality of life changes were inevitable given the continued addition of new PR ships. We are also with this update finally getting the cat dorm. I've already announced Announced that in previous videos that actually got delayed and will be added in this update where it was supposed to be added earlier. So because of that I won't talk about that much in this video. We get new voice line updates. Most of them are the new PR ships. We get some new supply crates in the shop if you want to spend money on that. And finally, Azuma is going to be the newest rainbow rarity ship to get a dynamic animation. So DRs are going to be getting default dynamic animations. And that's it for the maintenance update. Now let's take a look at the new PR4 ships, as well as the fate simulations of the PR3 ships. Hopefully both are worth the grind. Man, I'm looking at this and there is a ton of information to cover this is going to be a long video guys so let's start off with marco polo this is the ship i was most excited to learn about and we'll start with her first stat wise she's looking pretty good that's not unexpected for pr ships she's looking very similar to vittorio veneto with a few changes here and there most notably we see that she has more anti-air she does have a little bit more evasion to make up for the fact that she will not have any luck for a little while if we look at her efficiencies though her main gun efficiency is big 145 percent main gun efficiency 
efficiency is really good. Her anti-air efficiency is also very good. So stat-wise, she's above Vittorio Veneto already. Now looking at how her development works in the PR system, she won't be usable until dev level 30 because she won't get her third shot. However, she's a PR, so that shouldn't take as long as some of the DRs will be going over. Now let's look into the skills. First up, we have a reduced out of ammo effect. This is 15% more damage when you're out of ammo. This is a very much a mob fleet skill. 75% chance upon firing her gun, so she wants a barrage gun, that she'll fire a barrage. This barrage looks kind of meh. It does cover a wide range here. It does look like it will make her have to be in the flagship to get full utilization of this barrage. However, when it fails and the 25% chance she doesn't get it, she heals herself by 5%. This is definitely a mob fleet PvE skill if I've ever seen one. Moving on to skill number two. If there is a Sardinia Empire ship in the fleet, her damage that she takes is reduced by 20%. This is pretty easy because you're probably going to want to pair her with Veneto and maybe Acula. If the Vanguard lead ship is a Sardinia Empire ship, so this would be something like Zara or Pola, it could be Duca, but typically you don't want her in the front, but you could do it depending on how good this skill gives her. So if that requirement is met, Marco Polo gets a her self main gun efficiency up by 10%, so she goes up to 155% main gun efficiency. That's really good. And her AA gun efficiency goes up by 50%, giving her 170% AA gun efficiency. That's incredible. Italians really get to shoot down planes now. Now the skill has a different effect if the Vanguard ship lead is not Italian. At the start of the battle, it gives two shields to the lead Vanguard ship, and it blocks three torpedoes each. That blocks six torpedoes. This honestly is probably what you're going to be using in the first place. This is a anti-torpedo meta counter in PvP at least, and can be really good against certain bosses like Sendai on World 11. Moving on to the final skill that isn't Siren Killer. All these ships will have Siren Killer, which gives 15% extra damage to Sirens. So for the third skill, for every enemy fleet defeated in a sortie by this ship's fleet, self, anti-air, and evasion stat is increased by 5% that stacks three times up to 15%. When other fleets in the sortie enter Enter their first or second battle of the sortie, and this ship is alive, fire a cross fleet support barrage 20 seconds after the battle starts. On their third and fourth battle, Sardinia ships in that fleet take 8% less damage. Oh boy, this really solidifies her as a PvE mob fleet ship. So first of all, she has a skill like a weakened version of Alabama, where as she kills more fleets in the sortie, she will get stronger. Then she has a barrage that she can give to the boss fleet, so if you have the mob fleet, do all the damage, and then the boss fleet fights its first fight, she gives a barrage. The third and fourth battle is not as important in the main story, but in Operation Siren, that might be relevant because the third and fourth battles might actually have Italians in them, and 8% reduction in damage is nice. This cross fleet buff looks fantastic, is versatile in both the main story as well as Opsai. Marco Polo looks really good. She obviously doesn't synergize very well with the PvP Italian fleet that we have going on right now. However, However, she makes the Italians be able to do a lot in Operation Siren. She is a fantastic mob fleet ship. All right, let's move on to the next ship, the USS Anchorage, a heavy cruiser. So stat-wise, she is tanky. She looks actually pretty similar to Prince Eugen in, le in terms of the health and the firepower. She has a little bit more torpedo stat, but less torpedo efficiency. However, she's even tankier than a Prince Eugen because she has significantly more evasion as well as anti-air, which is very helpful for surviving. She's even a little bit faster. You might be a little bit concerned about DPS. However, she does get a ghost main gun plus one at dev level five. In fact, most of her upgrades come early in her development level, meaning at dev level 25, you could probably use her competitively. Stat-wise, this ship is perfectly fine. Let's see what the skills have for us. For skill number one, to start off, she gets a 15% boost to her own evasion. Her own evasion base is actually pretty good for heavy cruiser, so 15% extra evasion in the stat that cruisers need the most to survive actually very good 75% chance upon firing her torpedoes to fire a special barrage this is a pretty decent barrage it covers a lot of area for taking out mobs and stuff 
On the 25% chance that this barrage fails, lower the load time of the next torpedo wave by three seconds. This is a skill that's new that we've seen in Kazagumo. So I kind of like this. It reduces the time of the torpedoes. Remember, she does have a preloaded at dev level 10, so that means she gets to fire this barrage right off the bat. And if it fails, it reduces the time it takes to get the next barrage chance. Overall, skill one starts off on a good note, but let's see what skill number two has. When firing her torpedoes, release a smoke screen and a shield. The smoke screen has a 40% evasion rate for five seconds, and the shield blocks 6% of her max HP. If the shield breaks, she gets invincible for two seconds. Holy crap, this is one of the best smoke screens I've ever seen. It has a shield that blocks 6% of incoming damage. If it breaks, she goes invincible. Smoke screen means she's dodging everything. These five seconds that you're going to see the shield and the smoke screen, she will literally be the tankiest ship in the game game in the vanguard at least of course this actually will go right at the beginning because she has preloaded torps and because it's a guaranteed proc unlike most other smoke screens in the game she is a complete counter to any preloaded meta honestly i think she takes the spot of seattle is the best pvp mafia fleet vanguard ship wow she's pretty tanky her third skill and fourth skill are the sirens killer as well as this barrage right here nothing too noteworthy but extra dps so great honestly anchorage was surprisingly looks really really good at least for pvp mafia fleets this is going to be very exciting and you can start using her at dev level 25 all right let's move on to the next ship the last pr ship this is the kms August von Parseval. Finally, they get another carrier for the Germans. Hopefully, she's better than Strasser. Well, the first thing I noticed in the stats is she has less evasion and less HP than Peter Strasser, so not off to a good start. She does have slightly more aviation, but that's very negligible. If we were looking at her plane loadout, she has two fighters, three dive bombers, and three torpedo bombers. That's very similar to all the KMS carriers. Her efficiencies for that first fighter slot is very good, but it's, once again, two fighter planes, so it's not significantly better. In fact, she gains it at the expense of dive bombers, so actually I would say it's probably worse. Stat-wise, not looking that impressive. Let's see if the skills make up for it. Her first skill has a 75% chance on any airstrike she has to deal 234 damage to all enemies on screen. Not sure how that would work in PvP if that counts all six of them. I would assume it does. It also reduces their speed to zero over two and a half seconds. They regain their speed after a second. So she has a freeze here. It is more consistent to time with. 75% chance is not a bad percent chance, but it isn't guaranteed. The damage at 234 damage doesn't seem that strong unless that gets boosted or modified by something that I'm not aware of, but right now it looks pretty weak in terms of damage. Skill has a freeze, so you can't be that mad at at it, but it's also, it's a better freeze than Strasser, I'll say that. Moving on to skill two. Fire a barrage on airstrike that causes special armor break to light and medium armors hit. You can see the rockets going off in this barrage right here. They are targeted. They look really strong. They have armor break for light and medium armor. That's something that really only Illustrious Muse had before this. This looks really good for taking out light armor enemies. Helena, Meta, watch out. The barrage is guaranteed, so that's also a really nice thing. This looks pretty good for adding DPS. Now we're cruising right along here. Let's get into her final skill. She deals 20% more damage to light cruisers and heavy cruiser enemies. When equipped with any iron blood plane so only one iron blood plane needed and remember we're getting a bunch of new equipment in pr4 as well so maybe they'll have an iron blood plane that's really good there self increase her aviation and reload by 12 percent as well as fighter efficiency slot by 10 percent i mean i like reload buffs i like aviation buffs they're pretty small fighter efficiency probably the least necessary of the efficiency she could have she already has a good fighter efficiency fighters don't matter that much and it also happens to be the plane type she has the least amount of. Self-increase of damage towards that light cruiser. So basically this ship will be very good at taking out enemy light cruisers with light armor. That's really what she's going to be best in slot for here. She's also going to have decent fighters, I guess. We'll have to see if there's anything coming in the equipment, but overall this ship is the least exciting of the three PRs I've seen so far. I assume the DRs are going to bring in better things than the PRs are going to because they're higher rarities but so far this ship is decent she's better than strasser she seems to fit a specific role of taking out light armor 
enemies. Although it'd be really nice if her self damage increase applied to destroyers and light cruisers rather than heavy cruisers and light cruisers since most heavy cruisers have medium armor not light armor. But there's a lot of things I would like to fix this ship. She does have a freeze. She does have targeting. She does have targeting missiles. She's really good against Helena Meta. Although the likelihood that you get her up to dev 25 or dev 30 before Helena Meta moves out of the meta, eh, pretty low. However, anytime you're going to fight a light armor, high moving enemy boss in PvE, this ship looks to be pretty good, especially if you want carrier damage. Carrier damage tends to be a little lackluster against light armor types. We've been looking at Ticonderoga and Illustrious Muse for our current best in slot light armor carrier killers. She probably takes the cake on that after this update. Of course, we want her at dev 25 or higher. Let's move on to the DRs. We have two of them and we're going to start with the KMS ship. We're going to stay German for this one. Agir, the large cruiser, the second large cruiser we have in the game, so Azuma's not alone anymore. So health-wise, she actually has less health than Azuma. This is a little bit surprising, but she is pretty tanky. Notably, she has heavy armor by default instead of having that medium armor that Azuma has. This means that she does not need that VH armor. Of course, we just reran that. There was speculation that she might need it, but she has heavy armor by default, so we don't need it. She can equip better evasion equips. She actually seems a little bit different than Azuma and a lot of ways she has torpedoes less firepower and a little bit different stat wise but overall she's going to be largely a pretty big tank here she will be able to equip both heavy cruiser guns and large cruiser guns so she will be able to use azuma's gun she will have higher efficiencies than azuma for that gun adding torpedoes is always great she does have a ghost gun so she does get that main gun plus one without losing out on damage, meaning she'll probably out DPS Azuma. Probably a little less tanky though, she's even slower speed wise. But she definitely looks like she's gonna out DPS with the ghost gun, the higher efficiencies, and the additional torpedoes. She will get all of her stats and most of her tankiness by dev level 25. You can want that efficiency for her main weapon at dev 30, so that would be good, but she's probably usable at dev 25 once again. Now let's look at those skills to see if she's worth it. Skill number one, self-equipped torpedo weapons slow enemies by 60 percent on hit for five seconds that's a vanguard slow it's also guaranteed she also has a preloaded torpedo so right at the beginning she's going to be able to slow your opponents this is actually amazing if you're running preloaded for pvp you can run her with torpedoes have them come in have them hit have them guaranteed to slow right as all of your preloaded stuff is going off. This also applies for PvE and bosses with Rishlu and any of your preloaded comps for trying to beat bosses really quickly. This looks really good and I haven't even gotten to the second half of this for skill yet. If there is no out of ammo debuff, she gets evasion stat plus 15%. That's pretty easy to avoid. Basically, she's going to get more evasion and make herself more tanky if you just have some ammo left. Overall, this is a great start. We have a slow in a ship that has Azuma-like stats and more DPS, really. Moving on to skill number two. When the main gun slot is AP or normal ammo, so of course it's going to be AP ammo for the most part, unless you're running Drake gun, self-damage taken is reduced by 15% and the crit rate is increased by 12%. That's fantastic crit for her if she's using her arcing shots as well as she's using her torpedoes and 15% damage reduction for a tank with over 7k health in the vanguard seems fantastic okay looking very solid part number two of this skill when the main gun slot is he ammo she gets a different skill main gun efficiency is increased by 12% but can no longer burn this means that she's pretty much going to want to run ap ammo but alas we have a third one when equipped with a large cruiser gun this will be like azuma's gun the main gun slot efficiency goes up by 12%. So this is basically the same skill as the HE ammo, but she doesn't lose the ability to ignite. Don't run HE heavy cruiser gun on her, that's just bad. I still really do like running AP ammo on her. The reduction in damage that she takes seems really nice. Crit rate is always pretty nice. Of course, heavy cruiser AP guns, not that great. But maybe she'll get a new gun from the PR research. I don't know yet. I haven't looked at the gear yet at this time, but hopefully she gets something that will make this skill more useful, but for the time being, you're going to use Azuma's gun or you're going to use an AP gun here. Now let's look at the last skill that is not Siren Killer. Upon her main guns firing, if there are no enemies within 35 range units, main guns cause armor break status on hit. It's kind of nice, especially if it can hit opponent's backline stuff or whatever. 
35 is actually a pretty decent range though. So we'll see if that actually triggers once she comes out and we get to test her a little bit more. She fires a special barrage every eight times her main gun is fired. However, if you're using a large cruiser gun, that happens every four times they fire because that gun's a little bit slower. You can see the barrage is actually pretty nice. We got some nice AP ammo hitting there right up the center. And then we have some targeted for that second slot here. Really good skill. A gear actually looks really good. Honestly though, she's a DR and she's not gonna get done for a year. So I'm a little bit concerned for DR ships that don't absolutely blow my mind because honestly, when you have to wait a year for them to be completed, you're always worried about power creep. Right now, she's really, really good. The question is, will she be good after a full year of events when you have her up to dev level 30? Overall, pretty good though. I really like the slow on torpedoes and given that she's pretty tanky early on in her development level, you can certainly use her well before her dev level 30. So even though I'm saying a year here, if you really focus towards her, you can get her up to decent usable levels pretty quickly as far as DRs go. Overall, she looks like a slight improvement over Drake and Azuma, which is obviously a good thing. Last but not least, we have our Kiryu, the one that we've been waiting for for actually since PR3, really. Most people have been waiting for her. Everyone's excited for her. I'm excited for her. Will she bring IJN back to the number one meta faction again? We will see. Stat-wise, she's a monster. She looks very similar to Shinano. She's a little less tanky than Shinano, but she has the highest aviation stat in the game, meaning she has the potential to hit the hardest of any carrier. Not to mention she has a significantly boosted accuracy stat, meaning the likelihood that she will hit and hit crits is increased. And dang, reading all of her development lists is a lot to cover. So we have to cover a lot in the development. Her efficiencies look pretty good. She's focused on dive bombers, which of course typically aren't as good as torpedo bombers in most content in Azure Lane. However, she has complete flexibility. She's running nine planes. The only other carrier that does that is Shinano, and we already know how good Shinano is. Her loadout is three fighters, four dive bombers, and two torpedo bombers. But before you get set in her ways, at dev level 30, her fighter slot is completely flexible to any type of plane, meaning you can equip her with torpedo bombers, making her a 0, 4, 5 plane loadout, or you can equip them with dive bombers, making her literally a 0, 7, 2 loadout. Out. This has a lot of added flexibility in making her a dive bomber queen or a torpedo bomber queen. Of course, she doesn't have that great of fighters, but she can equip them if for some reason you need a lot of anti-air. Her efficiencies are really good too, and she gets all of her nine planes starting at dev 25. If you want that flexibility, you need dev level 30, so I would recommend she needs dev level 30, which will take you quite a long time. Stat-wise, she looks like she could very well be the most powerful carrier we have. Have, but let's see if the skills allow her to do that. She's competing with Shinano, and Shinano has really good skills. First up, 100% chance when she launches an airstrike to fire an extra barrage of planes. This is extra targeting planes, Tenrai and Suan. These look like new planes, so I'm assuming these are planes we're getting in PR4 research that I'll go over at the end of this video. They are converging and they look very powerful. Also, there's lightning. Looks really sick. This is a great barrage, 100% chance. Good stuff. Starting off strong. Let's look at skill number two. When equipped with fighters, Fire a bullet barrage every 12 seconds. This barrage looks like this. Nice arcing shots here. When not equipped with fighters, fire a sword slashing barrage on the airstrikes. That looks like this. It covers a lot of area here. This looks very good. Honestly, it reminds me a lot of the meta ships with the amount of extra planes and extra barrages and really cool aesthetics here. Giving a lot of extra DPS on board and hitting a ton of stuff. Nothing really special, just tons of damage. Moving Moving down to her third and final skill that does not include Siren Killer, if equipped with any IJN planes, and once again we do know that two new planes are probably coming in PR research because we know her barrage has those planes and they're not in the game yet, but we'll see. If equipped with IJN planes though, she increases her aviation which is always amazing, as well as her accuracy which is also pretty good, by 15%. If not equipped with them, she increases her anti-air and accuracy by 15%. So really she's increasing her accuracy by 15%. Percent regardless, and then you get to choose anti-air or aviation. You almost always want aviation, so you want to equip IJN planes there. So hopefully we get some good IJN dive bombers. I know in my live streams leading up to this, I predicted a UR 
Japanese dive bomber because Harkiryu is here, and given that her barrage has one in them, I'm hoping they have it. Overall, this ship is going to do a massive amount of damage. She seems kind of boring, though. There weren't any unique skills. That doesn't mean she's bad. Don't take me wrong there. She's certainly going to be one of the hardest hitting carriers there is. But it's really just a lot of barrages and extra planes and just big number. So is a gear, but a gear has a slow and is a little bit unique. Parseval is probably the most lackluster of the five, but she's not bad. She does have a freeze and she does have a purpose in killing light armor enemies from the sky. So she's certainly not useless. I don't think any of the ships in this set of five are useless. Marco Polo does really well as a PVE cross fleet buffer, something I would love to pick up very early. And surprising me out of everybody, the best ship that I think and the one that I'm most excited to get started on first is Anchorage. Overall, the five ships in PR4 are really good. I like all of them. They all have a little bit of a purpose. They all kind of power creep in a little bit of ways, but not too powerful. We have Harkiryu is a little bit better Shinano. We have Aguirre, which is a little bit better Drake. We have Parseval, which is a little bit better Peter Strasser. We have Marco Polo, which is a very unique ship. She has a cross-fleet buff that is probably one of the best cross-fleet buffs that we have available to us. And we have Anchorage, literally the best tank that we probably have in terms of survivability for the Vanguard. Because of her evasion rate smokescreen, she's a PvP monster I'm thinking she's going to be. A definite counter to the preloaded enemies that we have in PvP right now. I like all of them. Anchorage is probably going to be my first one. Then I might work on Marco Polo, and then I'll probably work on a gear. Parseval and Harkiryu are probably going to be the last two ships I work on. But overall, all five ships pretty good. We do have four more Fate Simulated 5 skills we're going to get into, so we're going to talk about PR3 and the upgrades that they get, see if that changes anything. You know, maybe those ships become best in slot after an update to their skills. And then, of course, at the end, we have all the new gear, so stay tuned for that. I know it's a long video. I do have timestamps, so use those if you need. For Cheshire, she has a reduced time loading for her torpedoes by 70% on her first wave. After Fate Simulated Plus 5, that is for the first two waves, meaning she's going to be able to put out more torpedoes. Also, when her HP is above 80%, she's going to increase the damage she can deal with torpedoes by 10%. Honestly, this makes her have a lot more DPS with torpedoes. That's pretty nice. Kind of ironic given she was an AA tank role and this does absolutely nothing in supporting that. It makes her better, of course. More DPS. It allows her to do some weird janky things with 1-1 fleets in World 13, but it certainly doesn't help her role as an AA tank. For mains in her second skill, her positional requirements are removed. This is actually really important because she has a skill if she's in the frontmost position and a skill if she's not in the frontmost position, but if she's Fate Simulator plus 5, she gets both of them all the time. This means that she gets her speed increase, her evasion increase, her damage reduction, her crit damage increase as well as her barrage. That is a huge buff giving her not having to care where she's positioned. She can get all of the benefits and they're really powerful. Additionally, her damage reduction is increased from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. That's helpful, especially since battles typically last longer than 30 seconds and more in akin to 60 seconds, especially in PvE where she typically is considered better. This is a great update for mains. Of course, it doesn't put her on par with a gear, but I don't particularly think a gear is going to be taking main spot. They do different things, and most KMS pure fleets will run both of them. Mains looks a lot better. Odin has a really simple change. Her barrage that happens every 18 seconds will now be able to pierce all shields, so she can now deal with enemies that have shields. Once again, she's niche, and her update is pretty niche. This, honestly, I guess is a benefit. It's kind of cool that you now have a ship that can just pierce shields without a problem, but her arcing shots get around shields, so the fact her barrage can pierce shields it is a PvE skill. Maybe World 14 will make this relevant. We're really hoping Odin being, she's so unique, but she's not really that good. We're just hoping that maybe World 14 or something makes her really relevant. This Fate Simulator Plus 5 is kind of meh. Last, and we will see if least, is Champagne. Champagne has an enhancement to her barrage and skill number one that now no longer means that she has to be in the flagship. This is actually very nice because it helps with having Rishu. Rishu needs to be in the flagship with Champagne for it to work. So the fact that Champagne had a skill and a barrage that needed her to be in the flagship was just completely stupid. They fixed that, so that's good. That shouldn't be the in the first place. That shouldn't have happened, but whatever. It's 
fixed now. She doesn't get anything else, so it seems kind of like, eh, you fixed what one of her problems was, but you didn't give her any bonuses. Of course, Champagne is fantastic for what she is, clearing things fast, and she is the queen of that with Richelieu, and so she didn't really need a buff, to be honest. People were going to use her regardless because of that preloaded and the really high reload, but they did make her barrage a little bit better, so that's pretty cool. Overall, the Fate Simulator Plus 5s look like usual. They enhance and fix some of the problems that they had. Overall, I think Mains probably had the best one. Odin and Champagne kind of just had fixes to their barrages, so they're kind of boring. But that's how Fate Simulator Plus 5 works. They're usually not that interesting. Slight buffs. Mains probably definitely got the best one. All right, we have gears, and this time we have a lot of gears in the research lab, so let's look at it. But before we get into the new stuff, let's talk about some old stuff that's coming back. We have the Bofur Stag in PR4. That's impressive. People need that for their battleships. And we have the High Performance Fire Control Radar. That is something that was in PR3, and I really wanted to be in PR4, so I'm really happy to see that both of those got added to PR4. Those are needed. People need those, and you really didn't want people to have to go back to old researches to get them because it'll take it longer for them to get the PR4 ships that they want. So now you can get the PR4 ships you want as well as the old gear. So go straight to PR4, really, if you have the PR3 and under ships that you want because now you have the best gears from the other ones for your battleships coming right to PR4. And let's see what the new gear looks like. There are six new gears coming from the research. And let's start with the UR, the J5N Tenrai. And it is a UR dive bomber. I called it, that's all I can say. I called it multiple times in many streams. So let's see what this new Tenrai dive bomber is. We saw it in the barrage for Harkiryu, so kind of got spoiled on that even earlier in this video. Of course, it's going to have the 65 aviation, so that's always a benefit. It has three 800 kilogram bombs, and it's going to have a 24% chance to inflict armor break. That is a ton of extra damage. This is the new unquestionable, no doubt in my mind, best in slot dive bomber compared to the gold hell diver the best in slot dive bomber no doubt right now this will have almost 20 percent more raw damage than that one this is going to be something you need to get your hands on and get it to plus 13 asap unfortunately this is once again research and it's a ur which means you're going to need 50 prints of it which is going to be really highly rng and it's going to take you forever to get so don't expect to see these around anytime soon don't expect to get yours anytime soon don't expect to have a ton of them anytime soon or ever but it is amazing this is the new desk dive bomber unquestionably it's fantastic this is the go-to equipment we're shooting for in this batch of research. Okay, now that we started the hype and everyone left now and all of my watch time is dead, let's go into the rest of the five new equipments. Two other planes, so we'll go with those. The C-6N Sayun is a torpedo bomber, gold torpedo bomber. It is Japanese, so it has the converging torpedo bombers just like the Ryusei. So let's compare it to the Ryusei here. Overall, it's just straight worse than the Ryusei. The Ryusei has three converging torpedo bombs, and this one has two. So it's giving up a literal third of the damage. <laughs> of course, it f launches very quickly. This means if you're trying to time something up perfectly, this could be convenient. It might be good to have one laying around in case you need to time up your airstrikes because it is much faster than the Ryusei, but you're losing out so much damage and the difference is like a second or something. So realistically, you're not going to get an extra airstrike in a battle out of it. Keep one around in case you just need it to time something perfectly, but it's honestly just worse than the Ryusei. So get those Ryuseis. Moving on, we have the German fighter BF-109G. And man, oh man, is this fighter changing the game. Did you guys want rockets? Well, you got rockets. This one shoots four rockets and they are looking very strong against light and medium armor targets. They look like they are targeted. It's looks like a good chunk of surface DPS. This fighter looks very strong and we do have to see exactly how these rockets work, but right now in terms of raw damage and just looking at the numbers here, I could see this also being best in slot. Really kind of is going to depend on what you're using it for, but realistically, you're going to want to get a lot of these and upgrade them. Next up, we have an AA gun, some of the least sexy parts of the equipment, but the twin 90 millimeter AA gun, it's an Italian gold gun here. Looks like it's going to be one of the new best general anti-air guns. It looks like a little bit better than a quad bow first. It has a little bit longer range, a little bit shorter, you know, reload time. It has similar damage. So it's okay. It's an AA gun. The difference is not going to be that worth it. If you have them, you can replace your quad bow first. Of course, 
course, I don't really use my quad bofors anymore because when I have an AA gun boat, I use my sextuple, and the sextuple definitely is going to out damage, at least for shooting down planes, this twin 90 millimeter from the Italian faction. And if I'm not caring about that, then I want to give them either the firepower stat or the hit stat anti-air gun. So realistically, being the new best in slot average or general AA gun means it's actually not going to see much use because I like min-maxing my own anti-air guns. And I'm not really going to invest too much on an anti-air gun that barely beats out the best in slot general usage. But it, I mean, I might as well state it as you know whatever it's it's decent use it if you have it but once again i like using best in slot i like the min max so you like to use the sextuple bofors or the bofors stag or the british one that gives them firepower i don't remember the name off the top of my head moving on we have a triple 305 millimeter large cruiser gun so finally we get a second large cruiser gun i assume this is a gears gun this is an ap gun ap large cruiser gun that's fantastic it gives us some you know alternatives to azuma's gun and because it's ap he, this is something I don't know yet because I the servers literally aren't up and I can't test it, but the way that the skill reads, it looks like this gun would trigger both the AP bonus that a gear has as well as the large cruiser gun that a gear has. And that would be actually pretty stupid broken. I think that's probably how it's going to work. And so this is definitely a gun you need to pick up and give to a gear. It's probably going to be only used on a gear, just kind of like how Azuma's gun was only used on Azuma, but it also looks like it's going to be by and far the best gun and has to be used on a gear. So I guess whatever I said earlier about a gear and switching out the guns, I pretty much just equip this gun it looks like and, and that will be the best in slot gun for her. Finally, we have the triple 406 millimeter and this is a battleship gun. It is an SAP ammo battleship gun. What have I been saying? Wow, a lot of things have been called today from Harkiryu to the dive bombers to this SAP gun. I mean, talking about Italians having an SAP battleship gun definitely happens. And as with all SAP ammo guns, it's going to be really good against medium armor. And in fact, this is the best in slot medium armor gun. It's kind of awkward because HE ammo is really good against medium armor and is also really, really good against light armor. This gun, not so good against light armor and heavy armor. It's still going to definitely lose out to regular AP ammo. So really now we have the rainbow HE gun from the last US event for light armor. We're going to have this gun for the medium armor and then we have the 457 AP gun for heavy armor. So when you're picking your boss, those are the three guns that you want for your battleships. Overall, it's a pretty good gun. So pick it up and get, you know, one or two sitting around, maybe three. Yeah, probably want to have three just in case you want to have a triple battleship fleet against the medium armor boss. This is actually something you should pick up. I mean, if you don't have it, you can definitely use the HE rainbow gun from the American event, that MK7. Overall, the new equipment look fantastic. We have a new best in slot dive bomber. We have a new timing based Ryusei alternative that you won't use very much, but it's there. We have probably the new best in slot fighter. We have a AA gun that power creeps the Bofors quad a little bit. We have a new special gun for a gear, which was very expected. And we have a new best in slot battleship gun against medium armor, SAP battleship gun, the first ammo type for battleship guns that is SAP. So equipment wise, I'm pretty excited. Of course, we do have the high performance fire control radar gets rerun as well as the Bofors stag. And the 457 is going to cost 60 prototype print in the prototype shop. Really happy overall with this update. The five ships look really good. The four fight simulated fives, you know, wasn't expecting too much, but they did fine. Mains looks pretty good there. And the gear all does pretty good. Nothing too powerful. That dive bomber is going to be a little bit annoying, but I assume we'll get some good stuff in the time being while we wait for those 50 prints that are there. All right, guys, let me know down in the comments which of the five ships is your favorite, which one you're going to start on first. I appreciate you watching through this whole video. A lot of work. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If I missed anything, I will make sure to update it in the pinned comment below. So, you know, feel free to tell me if something I got wrong or I'm missing something crucial. But yeah, I'm actually really excited for this event. I like pretty much everything here. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'll probably be streaming a lot of the grind over on Twitch. Anyway, guys, take care and until next time and make sure you guys have a great update day. Good luck on your grinds. See you next time.